Welcome everybody. I want to introduce myself first. My name is Lars Somhatsky Hello and I'm a developer at a small company in Hamburg. Um, we used to use the object and EOF. I'm not exclusive actually, but the stuff is very similar. So I'm experienced in showing you how to build a new search application, a database application using GORM, the DB modeler, and a project center. At first, I want to show you a small database application I hacked together in the days before. <coughs> it's called Developer Manager. And I already prepared it. Usually, you would open it by double clicking on the app folder, but we are in Ubuntu. There is no native support for Postman in it, so you have to go to the binary itself. And I'm using Ubuntu because I want to show you that you don't need to switch to Knustep at all. If you want to use it, you can. Get a much better environment. But people mostly are thrown away by the interface that's a little bit outdated nowadays. But it fits pretty well into the GNOME interface. Besides the menus, it's the menu of the application, um, which by the <coughs> apps would usually be here. This is currently the work time, and in future versions you will have an application that fits in your environment perfectly well. So, now I want to show you this application first. You see here two windows. The intention of the application is just to be a mock-up of a uh, demonstration of a small app which you can use to um, organize your developers in the project with tasks. And I already put some stuff into the database. I can fetch that now. And here you see some, some developers, some projects, and this are tasks that are assigned to those developers. I can now choose one developer Nicola, for instance, and say he should get a task assigned. Nicola, which task would you have assigned? Which task? Which task? Hmm? And I can type it in here. I hope I get the spelling right. And this is new step project. All the stuff stays in the unsaved state at first, and I have to hit save to make it persistent in the database. Now I can quit the application, restart it, fetch the developers again, and voila, Nicola has still this task site. And to show you that not just somewhere, this is tricky. Inside the application, I open the data database with um, PG Admin. And you can see this is the database. Here are tables. And if you look into these tables, you will see all those entries. I open the task table. And you see all the tasks aligned. Um, is it, it's usually made in the database. It's built over several tables. And you have to join those tables by the IDs, for the basic stuff. Um, while this is good for the database itself, it's also good for working business, that 
because of that you want to make your own interfaces for the database, uh, your own applications. So that's it for this small application now. Now I'm asking you, you should can you guess how many lines of code I wrote for this application? Yeah, you you know. zero. <laughs> it's written outside. It's written outside of the zero line code that I, I wrote. And now I want to show you how to build such an application. With all those tools I mentioned. But first we need a data model. And for that I not trick you into believing this is without code. And doing some magic stuff, I'm asking you to give me some ideas for what about the database application should be when we okay. So what kind of database and what we implement, what kind of application? Any ideas? GORM? No, we can't implement GORM with it. We need some, some, uh, some entities like, for instance, a lending library, books. Okay, books. We need an entity or a table, which is named. And we want, in the library, we want also have some users. Uh, Readers. Readers. Each one covers a book. <coughs> okay. Now we need to find out what in what relation those those entities are. Obviously a reader can lend many Many books, up to three books, for example. Let's say just many. Make, don't make it too complicated. Okay. I so a relation first, and one reader can have many books. But one book can actually be only read by one reader. Read by one reader. <coughs> so this is. Uh, one to many relations. This is rather simple. And maybe we add some additional stuff to make it a little bit more advanced, but I don't know actually. I have no idea how the timing is. And um, maybe we start with this first and add additional features later. So I show you now how to create a data model. And for that purpose we need to make use of the um, DB Modeler application. No. Um, if you use Ubuntu, then you can install some of the stuff I'm using now, actually almost in here, but those versions that are available at Ubuntu are a little bit bug written. They are a little bit outdated, you know, Debian is the base of Ubuntu, everything there goes a little bit slow. So I installed the stuff from Ubuntu, but installed over all this the latest version from SVN. There are a little, uh, some bugs were fixed, and so we can use it now. So don't be surprised if you want to do it yourself and you install the stuff which, which comes out of the box from a Ubuntu that it maybe may not work really. So now, the V modeler. <laughs> this is an application to map database tables to objects. It's essentially the same like um, what Apple did with um, um, what's, what's entity no, not the O modeler, the O modeler, and the O modeler was a modeling application for the AOF, 
For EOF, it's the Enterprise Object Framework. Very bullshit name, but very good uh, very good framework nevertheless. And let's start now. Wait a moment. I prepared a setup for all what we're doing now. And um, there's an a couple of help files we need and I have made a template for this which I create a copy now Librarian, maybe? Bookshelf. In bookshelf? Yeah, bookshelf. <coughs> okay. Now I get this template copied, which contains several files we need. There's um, all this stuff that um, the Application builder needs later. Actually, here is some code inside the header files, some controller files, and everything else. It's still named like it was in the template. I renamed this now. Everything inside here got renamed according. This was just a little shell script, nothing special. <coughs> and we are ready to build the application. Back to DB Modeler. There's already an empty model inside the application template. I open this now. We need better shooters for our clean step. This 
file called bookshelf EO model B, where D little D stands for directory because it's not actually a file, it's a bundle, it contains all the stuff to map the object data to the database in the end. Now we got an empty EO model and we want to play at entities first. The name, the first entity was books. Books and the second was real. Let's stop now. Did it crash? No. I can't see it anymore. It must have been crashed. No, I did. Just stick away from it. What? Stick off the brick in the past. Yes, it did. But the icon is gone. Edit. Oh, edit data. Ah, yeah, okay. No, 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 that's the CD database. It's three, it's crashed. Come on. The show effect. Here are two entities actually called books and called actually we take better take the singular word form reader and book because it models one entity. Yeah, so for other columns, you can define a class which you want to use. We now resort to the original record because we um, don't want to do any special stuff you could do in a special defined class, but it's not needed now. Now here are our, our entities. First, I give it a database name. The external name is the name for the table in the database later on. Um, it's better to use lowercase naming here because I found there are some problems with the adapter to create a database otherwise. Okay. And when, when we try to save it now we get uh, a checking which Tells us several things uh, are still missing. For instance, here it says the primary key for both entities is missing. It wouldn't make a good figure in the database without keys. But it gives it nevertheless, but we need what to do. So we now add attributes. And the first attribute is preferably the ID. Come on. Column name, we choose the same ID, <coughs> and we want it to have an NS number. This is a class. Uh, this is a class from from um, OpenStep or GNUStep, which is used to implement number values. An external type is what's in the, in the database and we choose here int 8 because we want <coughs> to allow for really a lot of books. Then we add an attribute. Oh wait, wait, first. We make this first, uh, this first um, attribute at uh, the primary key and we make, we lock it so that means if you change it if you change this attribute, you, uh, you can't change it, basically. The first attribute of the book is the title. <coughs> this will be an NS string, a class which can hold string values. 
and the external type will be a variable character and we make it quite long let's say 255 bytes since some tiles are long and we want to have an attribute inside the class visible this purpose is uh, this column if you click the little diamond you will make sure that um, you can see it in the, in the, um, in the class um, object layer in the, in the object layer the idea is invisible we don't want to mess with it and TTL2 takes completely control of it so we are not PHP or whatever who handles around these IDs we don't care for that stuff we are object oriented and third column is um, whether it's allowed to have the entry for the attribute empty or not if I click it it's allowed to have a book without a title if it makes sense new idea but it helps later if you enter data that you don't need to enter everything at, at the beginning and then we want another attribute let's say that's the author names are not that long and so it takes 30, 63 characters and the reader obviously, obviously also needs an ID name and the last name it's just enough for now <coughs> another question to the American English keyboard All the attributes we need. We save it now. There are no problems so far. But all about uh, a, a relational database is all about um, relations, and so we need to model a relation from reader to book. So, since a book can be read by just one reader, but Every reader can have many books. We need to add a foreign key in the book <coughs> and entity. And this is called come on, book. means foreign ID
and it needs to have the same size as the ID in the book entity, of course, so we can join it. Um, this will not be visible. It will not allow. Um, okay, we can have books that are not landed currently, but I just leave it out for the purpose now. Or maybe I don't know. Hmm. I leave it. Maybe another <coughs> thing. Okay. And now we are going to join those two entities. For that purpose, we are going to. There's a book ID. It's reader ID. Sorry, I made a mistake. For that purpose, we are in relationship, and since the relationships are not that easy to enter here, we have an um, inspector for that purpose. We could have used it before, but everything by its time, and we call that relationship. Reader. We want to have it enabled. And we go to an inspector. And now we join um the entity reader and we take the resource attribute where we're going, where we're, where we're coming from, the reader ID, and if there's the, any destination attribute which is here, the ID of the reader. Connect that. And now we're doing the same for the reader. We have a reverse relationship. And this we call books because many books are available. And this goes again from the ID to the reader ID. And say to many, connected. Now we can have a look at what we have done in Diagram Editor. And we can see that one looks similar to what we did here. It's only swapped around. You can use that um, to get a better impression of what all is in your model and so on. I don't know if it's useful with for editing. I never tried it in the AO modeler. You can use editing here. Do editing here. And it doesn't look like this. So, now we got everything in our model what we need. Now we need to now we need to create the appropriate database for it. And for that purpose we get a, a generate SQL button here, but we need to first um, say which kind of database we want. And I'm choosing here Postgres SQL because I like it and <laughs> because it's a really cool database. SQLite never used it, but not this way. And it can go down. And outside, and outside, the nice guys outside put up. Have you shot them? Yeah, they got the. Uh, yeah. 
Plakate oder was auch immer. Ein Poster. Ein Poster, ein legaler Poster. Die Passwort hier ist Knuster. Die Host ist die Localhost. Die Port ist Asylly. Any Database ist <coughs> Bookshelf. I had some troubles while creating databases using this adapter and in the end I realized you have to write the database name in a lower case otherwise you get some unknown troubles maybe it's a bug in your model it doesn't matter it has to be lower case now we can generate SQL and we say create database execute this then can now have a look into the uh, into um, PG admin. No, it doesn't it's, it's not worked. Hmm. Show sure effect. But if this this doesn't work, we can also save this stuff as an SQL file somewhere and do it manually. It's the workaround that always helps. I don't know why it's not working yet. tables and stuff like the way it's supposed to be. You can check here several features you want to have. Create tables. If you already got tables in, you want some tables out, you can say drop tables, primary key constraints. And you see all the SQL is generated right here. And I hope it works now. Sometimes Locks the databases when I I'm still in there in PG admin. That's the window. Now you will look if it worked. No tools, zero tables. Not good. <laughs> Show effect. For some reason it doesn't work. It's possible. Hmm? It's 
However, I do it in the traditional way. Can you just show us how to make an application out of this with the other example? I guess you all know how to create tables. Okay, <laughs> so but we are already I think done, right? Yeah, probably. It's <laughs> almost done right now. <coughs> but we need a database. Otherwise we can't. Sure, but you can use the other example. <laughs> to just yeah, tell us why it's already there then. <laughs> <laughs> then. All, all things thing is all Everything is done then. How do I get this? Ah, here it is, man. I'm blind. And worked fine. Now we got our tables in here. I think I didn't need to show it. Two tables, whatever. So, now comes the interface part. For that purpose, I go into another application, which is called. GORM for GNU Step Object Collision Modeler. It's basically a clone of the interface builder from Next or Apple. Um, <coughs> I open the prepared interface model file now. <coughs> interface model file consists out of serialized objects which are deserialized at runtime and connected with proxies with the actual code. We now need a window, or two windows actually. You can easily create them by track and dropping the, those windows out here. We got a window, and inside that window, we need several <coughs> um, interface elements to make those um, object to, to show them to, to show those objects or edit them. This is an NS table view, which models uh, just a table. And we have several columns inside, and we will bind each column to something out of the database. But first, I need to resize the stuff a little bit. Due to a bug, it doesn't work correctly. I leave out all the additional stuff to refine the interface. I just leave out table titles and so on to be a little bit faster. <coughs> now we need some button <coughs> which will trigger the action to actually fetch those readers first. Some button to add a reader and some button to remove one.
And now comes the interesting part. Now we see an interaction of <coughs> those both applications. And I'm now going to track um, <coughs> some entity over here. into the um, GOM model. What is this? That's why I could ask. I did save it, or didn't I? Table view. Columns. So the buttons, fetching. Save this. I can use it again. Yeah, this would be maybe this was the case. No, it shouldn't. Was maybe in one version of the model that made it crash. Maybe you, you have an old template, but the yeah, the template may, might be old. Yeah, actually. So okay. now we're going to wire this all up. Okay. 
and I just drag the book insert here and what we've got now is an editing context this stands for an editing context and this is an exemplary um, example of book entity an editing context is something like a transaction you can use this editing context to make your changes editing and if you don't miss it, you say editing context save and everything goes in the video database now we have all those columns here and we now wire up the, the columns with the right um, attributes of the entity for that purpose you click into a column highlight it and track with the control key clicked onto the, bug, uh, onto the book entity and then you choose an inspector EU column association and wired up for instance with the title connected and the other one with the author and our buttons first button we connect also to the book and here we say target is the action what is fired when you click the button is fetch it works makes um, that this button fetches all the books in, in the database for the other buttons we need to uh, connect also to the book entity but we need different actions for an add I did not select the book okay we need to invoke insert and for the remove So now we need a save menu entry. And for that purpose, we got the main menu here. This is the menu of the application itself. And here we add the menu item, which does the saving. And we will wire this up with the editing context. And they save changes. Connect. Now we are in a state that we actually can try what we have done. It should already work for that purpose. Save. Yes, save. thanks for the hint. For that purpose. We <laughs> use the um, third application of Bluestep, the Project Center. Project Center is um, mainly the EDE of Bluestep, and we use it just to build our application. The icons down here should align by itself automatically. This works in Window Maker but not in the Window Manager form, sadly. You can do that. Whatever. You open the project. The build pane. Build everything. Now launch pin. 
project. And we don't see our window because ah, there it is. We can now add some work. Written by Roberto Book and Ricardo Book. I wish you. Documentation. We can spell it correctly. With two T's. With two T's. T's. Okay. That's a good one. And then another book. You then write for another one for. <laughs> 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 No, that's a good name. That's a good name. Which kind of book you want to have for development? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you save this. With the application, relaunch it, and say fetch box, a critical error, of course. What's that? Passwords are in the I mistyped the password in the adapter. Mm -hmm. This is why never this never never this is the case because, this is because, because all this stuff did not work. <laughs> 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 okay. It could, at least it could give me a hint what I did wrong. Write down your back list. Show effect, I would say. <laughs> um, well, it would want like the example it would have before. If I, the example I prepared before did work, I had some troubles. 
Meanwhile, but not that kind of trouble. Possible location for the visa. Yes, it's here. But I didn't change the data, this actually. Whatever. I think you saw what I wanted to do. Everybody has gone now. <laughs> I cleaned the room. <laughs> yes. Yeah, really. That's a good. Maybe I have to learn a little bit more about presenting. Yeah. It's a lot of time. <laughs> well, it's, it's a matter of luck. <laughs> That's it for now. It was my first time for a presentation. I can only learn. <laughs> Thanks. You're probably